So, this is a summary of the ideal gas calculation. It was quite long, it had lots of different ideas, and all of these ideas are important in statistical theory, so let me go through it step by step. What we started with was the quantum solution of a free particle in a cubic box. And we showed that the energy levels are labeled by a vector, and in particular, they were 2 pi h bar squared over m c to the minus 2 thirds. That's the length of the vector n squared. So this was the first result we had. We model a gas as a lots of free particles in a box, and we calculated from quantum mechanics that the energy levels were this. And note that this result depends quite strongly on the shape of the box. So in fact, this result is only true if the box is a cube. If I take a different shape box, I will get different results. So this result depends on the shape of the box. So that was the first point. The next part was we developed the theory of the canonical partition function, and we said that if the particles are non-interacting and distinguishable, it's quite simple. The partition function for non-interacting, distinguishable. So this was Z is sum over possible particle states, which are labeled by these vectors n, so sum over all possible n of E to the minus epsilon n over kVt. Uh, number of particles, we proved this result. If particles are non-interacting and distinguishable, you can just sum over the single particle state and take it to the power of n. But, in a real gas, the particles are indistinguishable. So our next thing we did was to say that really the particles are indistinguishable. And there you can't calculate the partition function exactly because the number of microstates depends upon whether the particles can occupy the same state or not, and so on. But we argued that at high enough temperatures, they should all be in different states, and then we can just divide by n factorial. So at high enough temperatures, this was the first time we made an approximation, then we can get it just by dividing by n factorial. This. And I told you, although I didn't prove it, and I will prove it next semester, that for an ideal gas, high enough T means about above a few Kelvin for this approximation to be valid. Next, we had to evaluate this sum. But you can't evaluate this sum exactly, because this e energy epsilon goes like n squared, so you get a sum of n e to the minus n squared. You can't do that exactly. So we used the density of states approximation, where you replace the sum by an integral. OK, 
Okay? And this is what we did last week. We calculated the density of states of epsilon as being 2m to the 3 over 2 times b divided by 4 pi squared h bar cubed times epsilon to the half. And this result does not depend strongly on the shape of the box. So in fact, we, to derive this result, we assume that the box is cubic, but you can show that whatever box shape you take, as long as it's not incredibly small of quantum size, this result is generally true. So this result does not depend, at least not strongly, on the shape of the box. And using this approximation, what you do is you replace the sum by an integral multiplying by the density of states. And this is what we did today. We said that this tells you that z is 1 over n factorial times the integral 0 to infinity with the density of states times e to the minus epsilon over kvt d epsilon to the power n, and this is what we did today. Today we evaluated this integral, and we got the final result, that this is 1 over n factorial times n kvt over 2 pi h bar squared, 3 over 2 times b. And then finally, we use various equations to find the equations of state. And so that's the end of the summary. I should say, because I forgot to mention it at the time, this equation has a name. It's one for the entropy. It's known as the sakur tetrode equation. Just named after the people who first calculated it. Okay, so this is a summary of everything we've done for the ideal gas over the last probably three weeks or so. And the form is general. Okay? So although these results, these equations are particular for the ideal gas, the calculation, the method we use is quite general. So we will, in various applications, both for the next couple of weeks and next semester, we will use the same kind of method. The methods are first, find the quantum states. Okay? If it's a non-interacting system, find the energy levels of the particles. Then, calculate the partition function, like this, okay. using approximations if you need. Then, calculate density of states to replace the sum by an integral, which you can do. Using this, find the final form of the partition function. And then, calculate what you want, energy, pressure, entropy, using these equations. So, Although the calculation is particular for the ideal gas, the ideas are quite general. And in particular, the idea of writing down the partition function like this, calculating density of states like this, we will use a lot. So these are important. Right, so that's it. That really is it for the ideal gas. The translational part, 
So what we're going to look at for the rest of the course are the rotational and vibrational parts of the motion.